Welcome to the Church Safety and Security Broadcast with the Church Safety Guys, sponsored by Checker. Background screens for your faith or volunteer organization. The Church Safety Guys is a nonprofit organization. Our mission is to inspire, influence, and impact church safety and security teams. We are protectors, guardians, ambassadors, and shepherds. We are about all things church safety and security, which starts with a ministry mindset and a servant's heart. Join us for the next hour as the Church Safety Guys unpack safety, security, leadership, and ministry operations with your hosts, James McGarvey, Paul Buckner, and Mike Scully. This broadcast is also available on social media, YouTube, your favorite podcast platforms, and on the all-new Church Security app. Well, good evening. Welcome to the Church Security <laughs> Broadcast. <laughs> Church Safety Guys. I am James, and once again, this evening, I'm joined by my, my co- co-hosts and partners in crime, Paul and Mike. So yes. how's that doing? Hey guys. Hopefully I didn't just try to just didn't break my phone setting it down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mike's over here shaking his head because I go to set it down and he hears kablap. All right. Sound effect tonight provided by <laughs> Exactly. Brought to you by I don't have iPhone. a soundboard. I, I really need to get one of those plugged in so I can do like applause and Right, all that fun stuff. Yeah, but then I would crack a joke, and you guys would be like, wah, wah, wah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> "Absolutely." So, if this is if this is your first time uh, joining us or listening to us, uh, please feel free to click like and subscribe on that uh, awesome. subscribe button on the lower right hand corner. And uh, as always, you can visit us at churchsafetyguys.com uh, and access church resources for. Uh, for your church or uh, place of worship. And um, you can listen to us on, on every major podcast as well. So, and, uh, and actually, if you have a, have a trope, have a problem, have a trouble, I'm losing it. Sorry. Have you guys know that have a problem um, locating us. You can download the church security app and uh, that's in the Google or iOS store. And there's, resources and content that's being uploaded all the time there. So definitely, uh, definitely resources available for you. So what's new with you guys? Anything crazy? Have you settled I, back in after the conference? I have. I, I think there? Mike has some new surroundings. I think you're, you're getting officially <laughs> located. Things have changed a little bit. Starting to build out my office officially for finally, um, floors are going in. So, I'm kind of uh, I'm out of the hotel finally. Boom. I feel like I've I feel like I've been living in a hotel for the last month plus, um, uh, sh- with a short stint in the ministry house while we were at the conference. But oh, uh, yeah. the rest of that is uh, hotels here. But the floors are getting done, the paint's getting done, the baseboard's getting done. You kind of start cool. to see the bookshelf coming together behind me. So nice. So is the is the uh, office going to be large your office going to be large enough for the piano to go in there i have the piano over here as well as my desk coming so So for for those of you that don't know mike is an avid lego builder and has like a twenty thousand piece lego piano that he assembled (laughs) so he likes not quite but yes i I, the the quick clarification there is I, I'm in tech, so I work on computers all day long. And so my escape is to go low tech. And beyond that is it's not just low tech to go with Legos. It's from being a person that makes a million decisions a day to following instructions that make the decisions for you. So it's a mental escape. You know, he's he's actually explaining that pretty good, Paul. I kind of feel like there was a lot of thought put into that justification. Right. For I don't feel like we boy. should tease him. I, <laughs> I I dearly loved doing Legos, even up into my my early twenties. Uh, collected all the Star Wars ones, and uh, I would I would make the kit and put it up on the shelf. I I, I did it like a. Uh, like some people go flea marketing or something and I would find them on clothes out and buy them for 10 cents on the dollar. So I feel you brother. 
Let's see. I was I was I was into Legos as an adult before Lego realized it was a multi-million dollar market. And nice. now they now yeah. they actually have marketing directly to adults. So I uh I used to collect the pirate series, truth be told. So I had like the four and all of the, <laughs> the ships and... <laughs> beat you to it. <laughs> Oh, you guys are crazy. So tonight we are going to actually walk. (laughs) (laughs) Tonight we're going to talk to the folks from Checker and uh, Checker is a a great background uh, resource company and uh, they've been kind enough to uh, sponsor us this season. And I'm not really sure why, because Paul's got some horrible puns and jokes. Um, but uh, we, we've used them or we continue to use them at, at my church. And and we've talked about um, on the broadcast many times, we've talked about how efficient they are and, and uh, that as a resource uh, for folks. So we asked them uh, and they graciously uh, said that they would join us tonight, despite Paul's. In theory, they're still in the green room waiting to be brought on to the show. <laughs> so. so. I'm going to go ahead and bring them in. So Justin and Emily, welcome. And thanks for, thanks for hanging out Hello. with us tonight. They're not Legos, but I also play with plastic toys and make resin molds. So like, okay. You know, oh. there's, there's hey. okay. Nice. Justin, I've, Justin, you got anything you need to admit to brother? <laughs> oh man. I had a whole Lego table back in nice. the day. So. Oh, thank you. What's yeah, nice is in case somebody ever burglarizes your house, you can scatter them on the floor between them and your and your bedroom, and you can create a no oh, man's yeah. land. So, no, I have Here. micro machines for that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh my goodness. Very nice. I, I don't know how to follow this conversation with a serious topic. You guys just like, you're off the. <clears throat> well, let me try to quickly do an introduction here because I was thinking about this topic today. We had a guy years ago, and James, we've talked about this in a prior episode, but on his very first Sunday at my church, he uh, somebody brings him to me and they said, hey, this is Paul. He runs our security team. And I'm like, hey, what can I do for you? And and the guy says, "Um, I want to join your security team and carry a gun at your church. And when I started talking to him about the hoops he would have to jump through, such as perhaps a background check, he's like, don't worry about it. I'll go find another church. And I think as often as not, uh, back at Emily's eyes, uh, the, the background check can, knowing that you would have to pass a background check. We had another gentleman uh, at the church I've been at for about two and a half years now that um, he wanted to join our kids program at about 30 years old. And he wanted to be out there playing with these little boys and little girls. And he tried to insinuate himself out into their group, which he was not allowed to be out there. And as I was running interference as a very polite bad guy and saying, Hey, listen, you can't be out here. I'm sorry. Um, I said, you know, before you could be out here, we need to know a lot more about you and you'd have to pass a background check. He goes, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I wouldn't pass the background check. I've been to prison four times. And I was like (laughs) thinking, well, you absolutely would not pass the background check, but I gave him options and it was a ministry first thing. But I was like, you know, you could work in our parking lot or maybe you could work in our cafe. And and I want this guy to come to know the Lord. He's not a bad guy per se. I mean, based on what I know about him, I just think, I just think maybe he was getting a little ahead of himself and knowing ahead of time that there is someone who's doing background checks in a church. I think it, it may it may cut off more things at the past than we realize. So James, how's that for setting it up? That's, that's pretty fair. I think we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll give you an A for, for effort on that. That's there we nice go. Segue. <laughs> so why don't we'll, we'll go ahead and throw it over to, to Emily first. And then Justin, if, if you guys could just kind of tell us a little bit about your background with ministry and then uh, what you do at Checker. Awesome. Yeah. So I, my name is Emily. I grew up in North Carolina in the Bible Belt. So grew up attending church and using different church platforms and serving in different ministries, was a part of a college ministry. And then as an adult, I've been, you know, nursery instructor for four straight years where I was doing (laughs) set up, tear down every week, hospitality, uh, Bible group leader, the whole gamut. I've, I've been able to do a lot uh, within the different churches that I've been a part of over the years. And um, I got to carry that into working here at Checker. Uh, whenever I was working at my prior job, I was an HR tech uh, working in partnerships and learned more about Checker. And the more I learned, the more I loved 
the technology and especially the mission. I know we were talking about Justin's uh, shirt earlier, but just trying to create a fairer future for those individuals that are impacted by our social justice system. And so, yeah, running background checks is a very easy um, step for churches to take. And we really want to unpack how to look at those and how to think about implementing background checks and safety at your different churches. Um, so yeah, I work at Checker and I work primarily with our church partners, uh, mm -hmm. church management systems that you might be familiar with, like PushPay or Church Community Builders, Planning Center, Rocker, all those uh, good guys. So I'm really excited to be talking with you guys today. Well, thanks. Cool. Justin, how about you, sir? Yeah, no, I am. I didn't know it was the nursery. That's uh, that's definitely an intense <laughs> area of ministry. Uh, <laughs> um, no, yeah. So my name is Justin Hine. Uh, I grew up in Denver, Colorado. I love it here. Uh, I've been involved in ministry since I was a kid. Uh, my dad was, you know, elder board, you know, all that fun stuff. Uh, I grew up going to all sorts of fun uh, youth events and uh, participated in church throughout college. And now as a, an adult, I've had the opportunity actually to work very closely with an organization called the Denver Institute for Faith and Work uh, and actually completed their uh, fellowship program uh, this last year. So uh, really love this uh, intersection of kind of work and faith. Uh, and I think that's where Checker is really exciting for me because uh, sure. being someone who has, you know, uh, who follows Jesus and, and believes in grace and second chances, uh, having a company that that believes in providing uh second chances and says, no, we need to look at a person as a person. They're more than just their past. Uh, that aligns really well with my personal values. So it's been exciting uh, to be here. So at Checker, I'm our manager of customer support engineering. So helping all the uh, our customers and partners uh, get past technical issues and blocking, uh, blocking factors like that. So yeah, really excited to be here and talk with y'all. Awesome. So we did uh, we did a webinar not too long ago uh, with that was checker based, and I love talking about the the topic of of grace and giving someone a, another opportunity, another chance to, um, you know, to to change their life or or to do something different with their life and not and still serve right and not be not be constrained to a specific box, but. We still it's interesting because we we talk to churches all the time and we still have quite a few churches that are very much against um, against background checks and don't want to be bothered with that process. Um, so I'll throw actually throw the, the first question over to you, Emily. Um, why do you think like for a ministry, you mentioned you worked in the, the nursery and different things like that. Why do you think a background check is important in general? That is a great question to get started. So I think it's a very simple check and balance that you can put into place, um, especially whenever you are serving your community and working with sensitive populations, whether that's childcare, I think is the one that is most top of mind for, for those of us in church spaces, but it could also be elder care. You could also have, um, I've spoken to churches that had, you know, programs for people with disabilities and, you know, cafes sure. that they could work at and things like that. So I think it's a very critical um, step in your overall trust and safety process whenever you're incorporating your volunteers. Um, but I, I really liked the, actually, Paul, I'm gonna give you a shout out here. You get a, a plus in terms of like bringing that example in of, yes, we're going to run a background check and, and yes, something is going to come up and, and those things can happen. But um, being able to have those uh, alternatives so that you can engage anyone who wants to serve in some capacity, regardless of what comes up on their background check, uh, is something that's super important. So being able to at least start there and then build upon uh, these different um, automations that you could have, whether that's through a background check and doing that on a consistent basis and renewing it, or your training programs that you do on a regular basis. Um, these are just the, the nuts and bolts components that you can put into an overall volunteer onboarding um, and trust and safety program. Sure. Uh, Justin, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think at the end of the day, coming, coming back to it, like, these people are serving people, right? And mm -hmm. so when we look at, at what, when we know that we live in a broken world, uh, we have to acknowledge that part of this is we care about the people at our church. We want to know mm -hmm. that people want to know that 
uh, the church and church leadership believes in creating a safe environment. Uh, I think that if, if it's me, right, and I have a kid, and I don't have a kid, but let's say I did, and I was bringing them to church, and I mean, kids ministry is such an easy one, right? Um, boy, you just, you want to know that the, the people watching over your kids are, are people who have been vetted through some sort of a process. Um, that doesn't mean that uh, it has to be the end all be all though, right? For them, mm -hmm. like there are other ministries, there are other opportunities. Um, and I think something that we like to, uh, something that we like to bring up at Checker is like, this can be an opportunity. Background checks don't have to be a like negative experience, right? This can be an opportunity for really positive uh, growth and for conversation that can lead to uh, really, really good uh, life change, right? Uh, you can be more honest and transparent with people, but uh, that might be getting a bit ahead of myself here. But uh, but yeah, I, I mean they're they're incredibly important, <laughs> and uh, and as you can see, I get, get kind of passionate about it. Um, I think another reason is is liability, right? Uh, mm -hmm. No matter what, no matter what industry you're in, right? Like lawsuits are real, um, mm -hmm. and it's not like churches are flush with cash, right? Um, we uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> we. You know, um, so, some of them are are have dollar signs on the door. Some more than others. That's most true. Of, that's true. I mean, most of the churches, most of the folks that we that we work with, ninety, I think it's ninety four percent of churches in the U.S. are under the membership of one hundred and fifty. So yeah. you know, when you look at the smaller churches, and those are those are really the folks that we typically talk to. Um, I know sometimes some of the excuses that that I've heard is well we don't do that because we can't afford it. Or, you know, there's just, there's, there's a hundred people in our church. And so um, I know everyone that's, that's another thing. Like, uh, you know, so-and-so has watched kids and has babysat for, for years. And, you know, we know, we know two things on that, that um, that doesn't mean anything like just because somebody's watched kids, unfortunately, and in, in our society. And the other piece is, I think it was last year, uh, the Barna organization came out with the top, uh, I want to say it was the top five things that will grow a church and that uh, different generations look for in a church. And I think number three was actually some type of safety and security policy. Um, and you're absolutely right. Like people have, have come to my church and said, Hey, you know, I want to start bringing my kids here. What do you guys do for background checks? Like, how do you screen people? And, uh, you know, our process, and, and I've mentioned it, I know, uh, to you guys before, but our process is we do the background check for a particular ministry, for a specific ministry. And then um, if something comes back um, on that background check, we sit down and we talk to them and we give them the opportunity to kind of explain and say, this is what happened and this is how, what, how it happened. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a good, it's a good conversation. It, it, uh, I think it builds more un unity in ministry and I think it builds more continuity with, um, with trying to be gracious and trying to get, get people involved. So. And I think to add to that, James, just the more time that goes by, the more commonplace this is, whether it's, something that your sure. insurance provider at your that your church uses like this is mm -hmm. becoming part of standard policies is you have to run background checks on certain volunteer workers if not all um, and more and more churches are getting accustomed to running background checks so I think sure. that the idea is certainly spreading and the the thing that we all likely feel uncomfortable with um, on this call is just the what happens when somebody does have something on their record and we know mm -hmm that in the US, we can be highly litigious. We've got one in three sure. people on average has something on their record. And, mm -hmm. you know, minorities and people of different ethnic, ethnic backgrounds are the ones that are disproportionately targeted. And so depending sure. on where you live and the different communities that you serve and membership populations that you have, like, these are things that you are going to come up against and that you are going to have to have these conversations. And so, the more transparent you are up front means, hey, we're doing this for the safety, not only of the communities that we're serving and the populations that we're serving, but also right. the other volunteers and, and people that are at this church. It's like, you, we are all going through the same process. No one's being singled out, no one's being targeted. 
And we just want to make sure we're understanding what happened to your point. What, what, what went sure. on? Let this be an opportunity for us to talk about it and then be able to take it from there on a case by case basis. For sure. I wanted to jump in behind that, James, because yeah, she makes ahead. a great point. Years ago, we had a guy come to me and, and he said, hey, I'd like to serve in a capacity at the church. He said, your pastor said to come and see me as it see me. And he said, look, this is what happened years ago. And this is a man who's married uh, happily, has grandchildren. But because of a mistake and I felt like he was targeted and it was something that it what what I understood of his situation was not fair. And in a loving relationship, everybody, everybody gets along great. He's not a threat. But because of what was on his record, there were jobs he couldn't hold. I mean, nothing you guys don't know about. And he said, you know, I know I can never teach a Sunday school class. I can't work in the nursery and I can't drive the, the, the church bus, but I would like to help. How can I get plugged in? And I love the fact that he still had that heart because some of us would just be like, well, I'm just going to lay down and spiritually die because this thing happened and and I there's no way for God to use me. And he was so upfront. He's like, I know you're going to find out. So I just want to tell you now. And I was like, I respect that, you know, to the nth degree. I love the fact that you came to me and talked to me about that. And we actually had a young girl that a family was fostering that the family came to me and said, look, this girl was in this type of a harmful environment and she's actually trying to repeat the abuse as a minor. So we need your help to prevent, we had built the rapport in our church of being understanding and loving. And I had a very tough conversation with a close friend. He's like, look, this young lady, we're really trying to help her, but we can't leave her alone with this type of young person because she's going to try to repeat the abuse. I mean, that's where the rubber meets the road. This is real life. Sure. Mike, did you want to jump in there? Yeah, quick thought. I mean, at the end of the day, we're a church. And I think I've heard a couple different uh, pastors kind of use this line in different variations, but it, we're not a country club for saints. We're a hospital for sinners. And I think at the end of the day, yes, we have to have standards and those standards are worthy of discussion. And there may be jobs or roles or ministries that are just not the right fit for certain people given their past. Uh, maybe there's a path to redemption, uh, certainly is with God. Maybe there's a path to redemption in the church for serving in a certain ministry, but there are going to always be certain capacities. I think, that, you know what, are just going to potentially be off limits. And I think we, we have to acknowledge that, but have an honest conversation, not just our teams, let's say our safety teams own the background check process. There has to have a standard and an understanding that when this happens, this is what we will respond with. This is our process of where we take this. And, and yeah. to your point, Paul and, and others have said that we give them an opportunity, that we don't close that door permanently, that we say, you know, we, we try to reach out with understanding, but also firmness in the fact that there are certain things that we cannot allow them to do. And I think that's that's where it's that healthy balance. And for us, um, Emily and Justin, we're big on safety being a ministry first and not just mm -hmm. somebody who's there as a bouncer protecting the church, whether it's background checks or otherwise, is they have to have the mindset and the ability to balance things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting. And, and I know I've mentioned it before, but the the other aspect that hasn't been brought up with the discussion is that laws change, right? So over over 20 years, a lot of things can happen. Um, we had a, a new couple uh, just start attending our church and they go to our, our life group on uh, Tuesday, I think Tuesday evenings. And uh, great, great couple, um, love, love the guy. You know, I've gotten to know him really, really well, really quick. And we were playing some kind of ice icebreaker game and uh, one of the one of the things was, you know, tell tell everybody something, you know, that nobody knows about you. And he's like, well, I'm a felon and you want to hear that game like shut down really quick. And he's like, when I was in college, I uh, I got stopped for street racing. And I said, really? I said, that's kind of interesting in Ohio. And he's like, yeah, he's like it was it was by Ohio State you know, university campus. He's like, I pulled out. He's like, I got to 35 in my Camaro. And he said it was right in a, a speed trap. He said two officers whipped out behind us, pulled us over. 
and I went to court and he's like, I fought it, but he's like, I never, I, I was never able to get it off my record. And I, I kind of looked over at him and I said, so if somebody ran a background check on you, it would come up. And it wasn't even, I'm not sure exactly why it went from a misdemeanor to felony. Cause I haven't researched, you know, I haven't researched the law in Ohio to, to understand that. But I said, you know, I said, honestly, I, I, I was kind of surprised, but pleasantly surprised that he said something because as he's getting involved in the church, I would much rather take the opportunity to get to know him for something like that or, or, or anybody for anything. But I'm just saying, you know, from his perspective, if he was in a children's ministry, if he was in the teen ministry, um, if he helped with safety, you know, we would run that background check and that obviously that would come up as a concern. Um, so, but to, to piggyback, um, kind of piggyback on what Mike said real quick, I think having, having the policy and the procedure, whatever you choose to do, being consistent across the board is what, what is really uh, the best way to handle it. And, and I know for, for me, one of the things when, <clears throat> when I talk to a ministry worker one-on-one, -on -one, um, I will say to them, hey, we're going to run a background check. It's through Checker. It's a real simple process. You know, you get an email, just fill that out and we get it back within, you know, a day or two. And it's funny because a lot of times they'll they'll sigh. They'll be like, well, how long is this background check going to take? Right. I can't serve until it's back. And I'm like, no, no, no. It, it usually comes within 24, 48 hours. We get an email saying yes or no. And uh, I said, if something comes back on that, uh, that gets flagged, you know, the person that runs that, that's a staff member will reach out to me and say, Hey, here's what we found. You know, what are your thoughts? What do you want to do? And um, I said, and, and then, and it's a, a very casual, very smooth conversation. And, and then at that point, I usually say, is there something that you'd like to tell me now that I'm going to see in that, you know, and it's at that point, I've already engaged with them. I've already set that rapport. So they're comfortable talking to me. And it's it's almost like a de-escalation tactic, right? Because you're you've established, you've kind of bonded, and so then they're like, "Oh no, no, my background check is fine." Or they they're like, "Well, you know, I did get a couple of speeding tickets back in," <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm not worried about speeding tickets." You know, if you if you pulled up, there was a my wife will tell you, I think there was probably a, a five or six year period in my life where it, it, it felt like every every police officer that I passed was out for me. <laughs> so I've, I've gotten a few tickets over the years, but um, it doesn't, I guess that my, my point is it just, is it doesn't have to be a complicated process. It doesn't have to be um, a burden, right? Even if you have a small church and the, and the church is trying to do the right thing, um, investing a little bit of, of money for a very inexpensive product is a good way to long-term see benefits of that for your, for your ministry and uh, and for the folks that are there and the and the folks visiting. So, and we try not to make it as overwhelming as possible. Like from that compliance perspective that you were talking about, like within sure. chapter, we have you know we're monitoring all those changing laws and all the things that are uh, you know ever evolving in this field, and and that is what helps with not even servicing up things that you don't need to see because they might no longer be relevant or applicable or things like that. So we're, we're helping to streamline that process for both you as a, a reviewer and volunteers. And then one thing that I love to, to mention, is especially for people who are not HR practitioners that might be used to looking at these charges or, or understanding what to think about them, is something that we call nature time nature. So being able to look at the nature of the offense, like what what happened, time, like how long ago was it, and then nature of the position that they're volunteering for. Does it relate to what the the, the role that they're trying to to work in? And so that's just an easy you know way to remember. Like these are the things I need to think about if something does come back on somebody's check. Um, and then if you know you have further questions, having those those. Uh, systems in place and having that framework in place to start with is a really good thing to have. For sure. I'd like, to, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Paul. <laughs> I'd like to jump in on it because I actually know a man who's a grandfather who he stole siding off the side of a house in Illinois, but lives in Missouri now. And uh, it was a felony amount of 
aluminum siding and he was like 18, 19 years old. And he's probably, I would say in his mid sixties now, and he can't vote and there's jobs he can't hold. And going over to the reform side of things for just a second, I feel like there are certain things that if you've kept yourself out of trouble, kept your nose clean for a certain amount of time for certain <laughs> nonviolent crimes, it might be handy if they fell off people's records. And, uh, but, but he could not serve on my security team and there were positions he could not hold within the church and um, he couldn't even own. And I'm a, I'm a huge firearms rights advocate I believe you should have the right to self-defense. It seems to be kind of written into the constitution. I'm big on that. And he cannot legally own a firearm to defend his home if somebody tries to come into it. And so it was a, it was a shame. Now he made the mistake it's on him, but I wish that I could have, I wish there was something I could have done to help him because he was such a great fit for a couple of our ministries that he was otherwise not allowed to serve in. Mm. Yeah. And even, I, I completely agree with something like that where things change and time passes and you want to be able to modernize what's going on. Like I think something that happens systemically here in the U.S. is the criminalization of marijuana and decriminalization of it. And so that's something that from, you know, certain states that have legalized it, like that doesn't even need to be something that even if it was a charge that happened years ago, it, it's not relevant anymore because our laws are changing, because regulations right. are changing and things are becoming irrelevant and so to your point like something that happened 30 years ago that is in that kind of a, a a state you wish you had the ability to change that and that's something that within our our platform we're able to keep monitoring those changing laws those changing regulations those changing restrictions so that if that does come up we're able to then reverse that decision and you can try again for sure for sure Okay. Well, let's, uh, we're kind of at our, at our halfway point, our break. So we'll go ahead and take a, a quick break, uh, with our sponsors. And when we get back, we will, uh, pick up the next, uh, next set of questions and, and, uh, next segment. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Nobody thinks it will happen to them, but with over 2000 emergency phone calls per month to our independent program attorney answered hotline, it's closer to home than you think. At U.S. Law Shield, we give you exclusive access to our 24-7, 365 emergency hotline. Not a call center, direct access to our network of independent program attorneys. With a price point of only $10.95 per month and unlimited attorney hours for criminal and civil defense, U.S. Law Shield provides you with unparalleled service and protection where it matters most. No other program comes close. We believe an educated member is an empowered member. We do this by providing educational resources featuring seasoned attorneys, firearms instructors, law enforcement, and experts in all areas of self-defense law. We at U.S. Law Shield believe peace of mind should come with simple and affordable protection. With over 50 years of experience with religious and nonprofit organizations, Thomas Alexander Insurance and Associates understands that your congregation is different from a traditional business. We're here to fulfill your needs, coming to you while creating a personal plan for your budget and size. From your local community to around the globe, we are advocates for you. Thomas Alexander Insurance and Associates, your partner in service. to the Church Safety Guys broadcast.
What if there was a program so uniquely structured that it would help you protect your congregation and, at the same time, help you develop best practices to grow your ministry and to be impactful in your community? What if there was a biblical resource that would offer thousands of hours of training and experience to guide you in keeping your ministry safe and secure and being prepared for the unexpected? What if you could have the collective instruction from public safety and security experts from all over the world at your disposal to help you with a biblical view of safety and security? Impossible, you say? Unlikely? It would be unheard of for someone to create something like that. We just did. Introducing the new biblically-based one-year certificate and associate's degree program in church safety and security. Developed by the Church Safety Guys and Centurion Bible College, this program is designed to give you the best of everything possible. Learn on your schedule at your convenience with experienced industry leaders and receive college credit for it. Enhance your learning on protecting your ministry and community today. For more information, visit centurionbc.org or churchsafetyguys.com. Enroll to begin your path of biblical education and learning today. The Church Safety Guys help church and place of worship safety and security teams all over North America through our broadcasts, online communities, conferences, trainings, resources, and the all-new Church Security app. Download it today. Help us continue to reach churches by supporting our sponsors, purchasing our resources, and consider becoming a ministry partner by making a monthly or one-time donation. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this broadcast with your team. And now, back to the broadcast. All right, welcome back to the broadcast of the Church Safety Guys. And uh, if you're joining us at a later time on YouTube, uh, feel free to click like and subscribe in that lower right hand corner. So we're talking to uh, Checker today and uh, Checker is a great, uh, great resource for churches and a sponsor of our broadcast uh, this year. And so uh, they graciously um, decided that they would put up with us for for an hour for the evening and uh, kind of talk to us about uh, what they do and how they can help churches and whatnot. So. Uh, again, thanks, guys, for joining us. Um, I want to kind of dive into the the actual process piece of it, and I know because we've talked a little bit about the the why and the how, and um, from I guess this would probably be more directed at, at Justin, but from an engineer uh, type standpoint, like how does how does the actual process work? Like if somebody sets it up and then. Uh, with getting the email and getting the response, what does the response look like and how kind of walk us through that, if you would. Yeah, sure. I mean, what I've been, uh, you know, Checker actually uses Checker for their employees. So, uh, and my church actually uses Checker too. So I've, I've okay. come to experience <laughs> Checker in quite a few different contexts. Uh, and sure. what I'm always, uh, and I have a few friends who have gone through Checker now too. And what's always fascinating is everybody says like, Wow, that was so easy. <laughs> that was so fast. Like, and actually, I don't know of any time that someone said, like, wow, that UI for your background checking company was actually good. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, that, that's pretty rare, right? So, uh, Checker is mobile friendly. Like, everything about it is designed with ease uh, and simplicity, which is great because uh, prior to Checker being used at my church, I remember the process and I had to fill out like, an old 2005, like, you know, web for me looking thing where I had to put in my three most recent addresses and, you know, I'm sitting in the church and I'm, you know, it's like, it's not a pleasant experience when you, I can't even remember like where I live now. So like, how am I supposed to remember that? Uh, right. And so what Checker does and makes it really simple is that for, for uh, our customers, we allow them to basically all they need is an email uh, to get started with, with running background checks. So if you have a volunteer's email um, or, you know, you can use Checker for, for your own internal hires as well, right? So as long as you have that email address for somebody, all you have to do is put that into the Checker dashboard, send it, 
And now that person gets an email invite where they get redirected to a like secure form where they put in their personal identifiable information, right? Your first name, last name, your social security, stuff like that. Uh, it's really quick and easy. There's not like 20 fields. It's like, you know, just five or so that are collecting basic uh, PII, right? Um, and once they've put in all of that, they have to uh, accept a few disclosures, accept a few uh, legal jargon stuff, right? Once they've completed all that, they're done. Everything's on their way. And the best part about Checker too is that we have a candidate portal or a volunteer portal is or either way that you look at it, right? Where if you're a candidate, and, you know, uh, James, you were saying like, oh no, actually some of these background checks could take like, my background check, for example, comes back in like 10 minutes, right? Um, because Colorado has electronic records, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's really fast. Uh, but let's say your background check maybe takes a little longer, depends on your county, right? Place that you've lived, et cetera. Um, you can go and check the status of your background check. You actually can see like, hey, where are we at? Uh, and you can download it, look at if you, something does come up, you can see what your employer is seeing actually, um, or the church, right? So it's really great that we've given this transparent process to volunteers. Uh, as well, it's fast, simple, uh, and just so easy. I mean, it, it's kind of hard to believe when you think about how clunky background checks used to be. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, that's at least from the candidate volunteer side. Um, sure. If you're if you're on the church side, the administration side, right? Uh, you can set up all sorts of different packages. Uh, you can say like, oh, I I want to run a really Let's say, um, I think, Paul, maybe you brought up earlier, like vans, like driving kids, right? Maybe to like a summer camp or something, right? Well, you might then, if that person is going to do that, want to run a motor vehicle records check on that person, right? Before they're driving kids. Um, but maybe someone who is uh, serving backstage on the worship team, it's, it's, you know, not as important that we look at their, their motor vehicle history, uh, you know? Right. I mean, it's, if, if they're driving, maybe not to M's, uh, <laughs> nature time nature. Right. Um, so what's really great is you as as the church and administration can choose what level of background check that you need to run, uh, whether it's something super simple and maybe cheaper if you're being more cost conscious or maybe something more premium, more robust uh, for more sensitive areas uh, for or for for. Uh, volunteer positions that are going to require like specific um sort of like specific uh what would i say like a screening right like the mbrs that's an easy one mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's that Did I have any any questions on that like follow-ups <laughs> sure or a quick comment then a question i think the yeah. what's great is that the it's really the the consumerization or the consumerized experience that you're talking about there that for that end user they're they're so used to tracking a package or looking at different things and they're doing it on this so i think the idea that the uh, that a background check has to be kludgy uh, when in fact it's not i think is pretty pretty cool and not just to, to your point to the applicant's perspective to really be able to understand okay where where am I at in this process am I in some black hole did somebody forget to press go somewhere uh, you could truly understand that now from the from the church's perspective the ability to uh, certainly tie in and automate and look at the ways that they can select the levels and and the different things that they want kind of a la carte or in package it, it has that ability to really kind of understand that we have churches that may just need a basic may just only check for purposes of that bus driver and they may not run them for everybody else but then you may have churches that you know what they're going to run them for their safety team ministry they're going to run them for their nursery they're going to run them for any volunteer even for that matter and say you know what if you're going to be volunteering representing this church on behalf of this church and engaging with other people minors or otherwise we want you to be background checked and so I, I think it's really cool that there's so much on the tech side of it um I, we're all kind of resident geeks here uh so i mean i, I think <laughs> i work in software myself so i i love the engineering aspect of it uh, and we won't get into integrations and apis and all sorts of other stuff here although i wouldn't <laughs> i wouldn't mind having that conversation uh because i'm personally curious but at the same point 
there's opportunities there for churches that are more tech inclined, that have more um, software that they're already working with on a regular basis to make those connections, to create automation and to apply things in a consistent manner so that the process of uh, securing a background check should actually be an easy step in your overall onboarding plan, not a burden. I want to jump yeah. in behind that just really quick and yeah. then James over to you and then, you know, but you want it to be as easy as possible. And I was, I was waiting for a, a way to say that Mike, because you want to take as much of the heartache for the church staff that aren't techie, that, that don't understand different <laughs> terminology that want it broken down to just the facts. What, do, what is it I need to know? And when you create when you create that environment and you create a culture, because Emily, you were talking about this. I believe it was you, Emily, that we were talking about the fact that this becomes more commonplace. I was in a church as a kid where and this is this is a tragedy. This is why we have background checks. But we had a gentleman who came in as a music minister and he was brought in by a pastor friend who knew he had a history of abusing children, mm -hmm. a career long history of abusing children. And he was old enough to be my grandfather at the time. And he brought him into the church knowing he was going to do this. And that wouldn't have happened if we had had background checks and the board could have had kittens, which is exactly what needed to happen. Somebody needed to, to go, I don't think so. And there was an enormous hubbub and it was my introduction at 13, 14 years old to just how messed up some some folks in this world can be and there's a very dark history that that certain churches have struggled with because they hid things instead of exposing them to the light and dealing with them and that's exactly why we have these these searches today and i guarantee you way back to the original part of the conversation there are people that won't even apply if they know that there are rigorous background checks there are wolves that are coming in that will not even apply because they know that they're going to be found out. And now, and this is where I'm going to bring it all the way back, and then I'm going to throw it to James. We want this to be accessible to the little bitty church that has less than 100 members because the wolves are going to seek them out. The predators are going to seek them out. And I'm getting goosebumps even saying this because they know they are less likely to do a background check. They know they are more likely to be trusting. So Justin, you're nodding. If we can make this so unbelievably accept, uh, not acceptable, accessible, that anyone can do it. So easy a caveman can do it. Pardon the pun. If we can make <laughs> it that simple, we can save people a lifetime of trauma or just maybe somebody has a history of, of theft and they want to be the new church bookkeeper. We can prevent things happening that maybe are not, we always go to protecting the children, but maybe it's just protecting the finances from embezzlement. James? I, yeah, just, I mean, and wrapping it up, it's interesting because I think a lot of times we gravitate towards a thought that, um, you know, it's just to protect kids. It's just to, you know, with for, for safety, security, that sort of thing. But, you know, one of the, the, um, I don't know, one of the, the most, I guess, building crimes in churches is financial, right? I mean, we've seen that in the last couple of years, especially with less oversight because of COVID. You know, people are more, more folks, more staff members from churches are working from home, have less public oversight, less, less oversight in the building. And, you know, the, the, um, uh, the stealing money or the misappropriation of funds has gone crazy. Like when, you know, I'm not sure exactly what the statistic is, but I've been watching it like with news and stuff like that. And it's probably for for churches, it's probably doubled in the last year um, with the amount of instances that we've had. So it's not and, and I want to get away from the idea that that as a church, we're trying to judge people. We're not trying to judge people. We're looking at, yes, past actions, but we're also trying to be good stewards and and we want to put someone in a position if they do have a past that they will be um we're not we're not putting them in a in a place or putting them in a position that they would be subject to do something again or be tempted to do something again so you know the practical application you know justin you mentioned driving in the in the car or driving driving kids places i mean that's if i knew that a leader had even a large you know, a large amount of speeding tickets in the last year, 
you know, well, maybe driving a church van, you know, with, with my kids in it might have a different, uh, <laughs> different thought, yeah. thought process in my brain, but the financial aspect of it too is important to consider. If someone has had financial problems at home, they're probably not the right person to be handling the finances of the church, at least unsupervised. So if you see that, if you see different things that come up in a typical background check, like maybe a bankruptcy or something like that, from that standpoint, it's not a, it's not necessarily a no. I mean, your church has to make that decision and decide what the policy is, but it should be a discussion across the board. And I know we've had, we've had situations. I mean, our church is in a uh, more metropolitan area and we, we have folks that have come in often and, um, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting to me because in a sense, it kind of feels like, um, you know, we just, if, if we don't have this discussion and that's, that's why I'm thankful that you guys came on today, but if we don't have the discussion, then nothing's going to happen. So for the church that isn't doing anything to be proactive, they're going to continue to not do something. And a lot of times we don't do something because it's a hassle or it seems like it would be a hassle from our past history or that sort of thing. So um, we wanted like collectively our ministry, we wanted to share this today just from the standpoint of, being able to say, look, it's not complicated. It's easy. There's something that you can do to be proactive and, and kind of go from there. So um, I will actually turn it over to, to Emily. I think you wanted to add something about the checker direct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then, no, to your, to your point about accessibility, I I've appreciated how our conversation is definitely geared towards protection and keeping communities safe. Um, and something that I've appreciated about what Checker brings to this industry is that that similar idea of like, oh, background checks are run to keep people away from things and keep the bad guys out. But we really want to have that more comprehensive understanding of the fuller picture of the individual back to our, our first points around like that balance of grace and safety. Um, so to the to the accessibility standpoint and just making sure that this is an easy action, regardless of how big your church is or what tech platform or tech stack you're using, um, sure. you can really just go start running background checks now. And this could be just one piece of your overall program as a, as a check and balance, but you can go right to Checker Direct and sign up. Um, we're running great promotions so that you can try us out, see how easy it is. If you're already using uh, one of the major church management platforms to keep in contact with your, your church members, we're most likely integrated with them. So you can turn on your integration and start running checks sure. straight within your CHMS. But either way, it's it's really easy, regardless of how big you are, what your budget is, what you need. You could either go directly to Checker and start running checks on your most high priority volunteer positions. Um, and then as you grow and as you build out your program and, and actually like, um, mm -hmm you know, are able to learn more about how to build this within your own church organization and each church is different and how you um, approach it and the packages that you pick and the, the opportunities that you have to volunteer for and screen for are all going to be different. Um, you can grow that as you as you grow. For sure. And we did have, I'll, I'll toss it over to Justin. We did have a, um, a website that came up. Um, so if you watch this at a later time, you're welcome to, to uh, check it out or go to their website and check it out. Um, and then also, actually, uh, if you visit churchsafetyguys.com, we have a link under uh, our uh, CSG partners where, you know, you can um, you can uh, click on it and it'll go straight to a page where you can get more information. So um, but Justin, go ahead. I'll throw it over to you. <laughs> yeah. And I really just like want to point out too that when we say like we're building a fair future when we talk about these things we're not just like saying that and we're appearing on you know podcasts and stuff like we're building products we're building products that build fair future stuff so for example mm -hmm. two things are candidate stories we're one of the only background checks in the world as far as i know uh, that gives uh, churches an option churches and employers right an option to request that a candidate give their story about a certain charge that may have show up, shown up on a background check mm -hmm. that's so empowering for candidates to be able to share what happened i have a friend who has something on their check that shouldn't 
be there when you know the story. I mean, it is there. It fell through the system. It's in the system, right? But like mm-hmm. when he shares his story, it's like, whoa, that's not what I thought at all. Um, sure. Being able to give mitigating information, all of that now has been automated through our, our platform. Really, really cool, especially if you're a bigger church. Um, and then two, we have a, a we have new products called one called Assess, where you can say these are the things we care about. These are the things that uh, we want to review, but but we're not going to say automatic no. And maybe here's are things that you know it's just not going to work for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can set that up and uh, automate a lot of this process so that to your point, Paul, like for that ministry lead, for the person that just needs the green, yellow, red, right? They can get that within inside of Checker. Uh, really empowering for your team uh, to be able to feel like they understand what's happening and that they're following the guidelines that you set for them. Uh, so just wanted to point out, we do have some products that really speak to the mission and speak to that idea of let's start a conversation. Let's actually like have one no matter where you're at in the process. Sure. Absolutely. Mike, did you want to, and you're still on mute. Sorry. One last point there quickly <laughs> is, really want to tie this into the ministry life cycle that is part of our book. And really the, the, the idea is that engaging and recruiting is certainly part of that life cycle. And, and that engagement is the conversation part. It's that context part that Justin just talked about. It's the story part. All of that is part of engaging and what we got to do with the members of our team. But we have to unpack onboarding a bit deeper and understand that before we onboard, we need to make sure we do a skills assessment, a personality assessment, and the background check. It's Mm -hmm. not just one or the other. It's all of the above. And we need to do more with that. So I think it's important that as we move through that, before we truly onboard, we have some work to do. And Mm -hmm. there's tools like Checker that can make parts of that easier. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's, I mean, I'll, I'll just throw in there real quick and then I'll, I'll let Paul close this, but that's the key here to somebody that's like, well, I don't really need to be nosy. I don't want to be, I don't want to be interfering in somebody else's life, blah, 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 whatever. Um, the reality is you're not, you're being a good steward. We've talked about that today and you're nothing saying that you run the background check and you leave it at that. Like it's a tool but you can very easily integrate a conversation with that to get to know someone better and to see if they truly are the right person for that, that position. I mean, we typically talk to folks about safety and security and that's the context that we're, you know, that we're talking about, but at the same time, um, you know, every, every other ministry, it gives you the tools, like Mike said, to, to be able to sit down, work through that ministry life cycle and assess okay is this really the right person for you know for this position so um check them out visit you know definitely check out their website you can and like i said before you're welcome to visit our website as well but um i will turn it over to paul and he is going to close us out tonight yeah very very quickly forewarned is forearmed and how many times (laughs) have we had these terrible conversations with family or friends if i'd only known if, if I knew in advance, I could have done something that's on the, the really bad scale on the on the, the horrible side of things. But then all the way back down to just how to minister to, to people differently. And we may find out something about someone where we're like, holy cow, you might fit into this other ministry. Great. Because of your background, look at what you overcame. So I, I think I have a tendency to look at it because I do have the sheepdog mindset. Um, I had someone in my close family that was molested. I tend to look at that, uh, you know, with that very uh, German shepherd, you know, mentality. <laughs> but but there are opportunities where maybe somebody's overcome drugs or something and they've they've come away from that. And they've got that that beautiful scar of where God has healed their life. And maybe we can plug them into a ministry based on what we find. It doesn't. As you guys said, it's inclusive, not necessarily exclusive. So on that note, let's pray this, uh, let's pray this broadcast out. So sure. (laughs) Generally Father, Lord God, I thank you for, for folks who, who uh, minister and Lord God in tough areas and make it easier for us to protect the flock, to know how to minister, to be forewarned uh, so that we can keep uh, the, the innocent children that are entrusted to us safe, Lord God, the, 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 the reputation of the church, the funds of the church, the ability to to move about the community, Lord God. I've seen churches that are hampered because of a reputation deserved 
or not. And I thank you for an opportunity made simple, made accessible, where we can literally take better care of the flock and minister better. I thank you for Emily. I thank you for Justin. I thank you for what they do at Checker. Lord God, I ask that you would help this broadcast to reach the right ears so that people can realize, hey, this is this is easy. This is simple. And we can know what we need to know before it's too late. I thank you. And I give you the honor and the glory in your son Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, thanks again for joining us tonight, guys. We really appreciate you hanging out with us. And uh, we will actually, we'll be on next week. Um, and I believe we're actually going to be talking about the the conference, the Church Security Essentials Conference. But um, tune in next week, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we will be talking about that and a few other church safety topics. So take care. Have a great week. God bless. Good night. Thank you for joining the Church Safety and Security broadcast with the Church Safety Guys, sponsored by Checker. We hope that you found it informative, and we appreciate your feedback. Be sure to share our broadcast with your teams. Join the discussion online, and for other great resources, download the Church Security app or visit our website at churchsafetyguys.com. Remember, keep a servant's heart a mindset of ministry, and Semper Disciplina. Always be training. Have a blessed week.